eggplant. Hello, in this video I will cover image capturing best practices for eggplant functional. Images are the foundation of your automation, so having well-captured images is essential to creating useful and robust automation scripts. The main topics I will discuss are image boundaries, capturing tooltips, the hotspot, search types, handling duplicated elements, image collections, and the image editor. Let's begin with the best practices for selecting image boundaries. All eggplant needs in order to identify the element you want to interact with or validate is a unique set of pixels, based on color, as defined by your captured image. This means that your captured images don't have to be large, they just have to encompass a unique set of pixels. Smaller images generally encompass fewer elements. Examples of elements are backgrounds, button gradients, text, icons, fields, and so on. By having fewer elements, smaller images are less subject to dynamic rendering, such as effects that determine the spacing between UI elements. If you include an element in your captured image, then Eggplant is going to validate all of those pixels, so don't capture aspects of the UI you don't care to validate. A rule of thumb is to capture a focused image that includes as few elements as possible or as required. Keep in mind that captured images have to be rectangular, and sometimes it's the way different elements overlay that make the image unique, so capturing images with more than one element might be necessary. For example, when capturing an image of text, there's no way to properly capture the text without also capturing the background behind the text. There might also be situations where capturing a particularly small image is feasible, but intentionally capturing it a bit bigger makes the image more recognizable and therefore easier to use. Here are some examples. Let's say I want to interact with the magnifying glass on the toolbar. Instead of including the surrounding icon and username, the latter of which might change, I'll focus the capture area on the search icon itself. I'm also being careful to exclude the desktop background in the captured image, so that if the background changes, I don't have to worry about it affecting my image matches. This desktop icon isn't a rectangle, but it has the background around it, and it changes states, so if I want to capture an image of it, I'm going to focus the capture area just to the inside of the icon. An alternative would be to capture the entire icon, and use the image editor to ignore the background. I'll discuss the image editor later in this video. If I wanted to capture an image of the notifications icon on the toolbar, I could capture this very small subset of the image, as those dots are still a unique arrangement of pixels. However, I'd worry that I'd have a difficult time remembering what the image represents, so there's no harm in capturing the full icon to make the image recognizable. Let's move on to the next topic, capturing tooltips. Tooltips and other hover over elements can seem tricky because as soon as you move your mouse away to toggle capture mode, the tooltip disappears. However, all you need to do is hover to reveal the tooltip, tap Control or Command on your keyboard to toggle capture mode, and then capture the image. Use the image boundary best practices discussed earlier when capturing an image of the tooltip. Focus on as few elements as possible by avoiding the background and capturing as close to the text itself as possible. You can make slight adjustments to the capture area by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. Use Shift or Alt combined with the arrows to modify the resizing behavior of the capture area. Our next discussion topic is the hotspot. You might have already noticed or used the hotspot when capturing images. It's a little red or sometimes black crosshairs that starts in the center of the capture area. The hotspot represents a point either within or outside the boundaries of the captured image. The hotspot is the location where actions, such as a click, happen relative to the image when it's found by Eggplant Functional. The hotspot is often used to define search rectangles as well, which are used to tell Eggplant to search just a subset of the screen rather than the whole screen. I'll later explain how to use a search rectangle during the discussion for handling duplicated UI elements. Moving the hotspot can help you capture an image with fewer elements, as you don't necessarily have to capture an image that includes the UI element you actually want to interact with. For example, if you need to tap on a search field in order to activate it, but you can't rely on the search field to always look the same, 
you can actually capture an image of some other static element nearby and move the hotspot to the field itself. For example, we might use an adjacent element, such as this back button. Instead of capturing a large image that encompasses the back button, the edge of the field, the field itself, and the blinking cursor, center your image on the back button and then hold down Control or Command on your keyboard to move the hotspot over to the field. Here's a similar example where instead we move the hotspot below the label. Make sure to not place the hotspot too close to the edge of the element you're trying to interact with, just in case the element shifts slightly relative to the label. Here's an example where it seems like moving the hotspot over to the checkbox, which is a duplicated element, in order to interact with it is a good idea. However, if you have a requirement to test the app in both landscape and portrait mode, you can see how the relative hotspot becomes impractical upon switching orientation. Not to mention that we can't always assume that the setting is already turned on. This is a case where it is probably better to instead use a search rectangle to deal with this duplicated element and to then perform a tap on the image of the checkbox within that search rectangle. Stay tuned for a discussion of working with search rectangles, where I'll discuss how to address this particular example. Next, let's discuss the search types available when you're either capturing an image or editing a captured image after the fact. The different search types are the different algorithms that Eggplant can use when searching for your image. There are five search types in total, and each is appropriate in different situations. It's best to select the appropriate search type when first capturing the image. But if you make a mistake, it's possible to change the search type later, without having to recapture the image. Eggplant does its best to select the best search type for you automatically, but it's always best to make sure that the search type is the best match for your image. A common thread through each search type is color tolerance, so I'll give you a primer on how color tolerance works with image matching, which will help you select search type or adjust color tolerance levels moving forward. Images are simply a grid of pixels, as confirmed here by zooming in close to one of my captured images. When performing an image search, Eggplant looks at the grid of pixels in your captured image and compares against the larger grid of pixels that makes up your SUT screen, looking for where the grids line up based on the colors of each pixel in the grid. Color tolerance refers to the range of colors that Eggplant considers acceptable for each pixel when doing the match and all pixels in the comparison must fall into this acceptable range. To illustrate, I've created two blocks of color that represent two adjacent pixels zoomed in close. Your captured images will of course have more than two pixels in them, but sticking to two simplifies this example. Below the pixels, I've indicated their color values in RGB. Color tolerance refers to a range of RGB values, so it's important to think of these colors in terms of RGB. I've also captured an image of this pair of pixels, as you can see on the left. The captured image is currently set with search type tolerant, which uses a color tolerance of 45 by default. Below each of the pixel RGB values, I've indicated the range of values that a color tolerance of 45 will allow. I've simply added 45 to the red, green, and blue values to find the upper limit and subtracted 45 from the values to find the lower limit. Any RGB values that fall inside this range relative to the specific pixel being compared will be acceptable to the default tolerance search type. Now I've changed my two pixels to use different colors that fall into the RGB ranges allowed by search type tolerant, and I've indicated their new RGB values below. You can see that the new colors look quite different from the original colors. However, performing an image search using search type tolerant succeeds with no issue. Now I'm going to change one of the pixels in the pair to use an RGB value I know is outside the acceptable range for that pixel. For an image match to be successful, all pixels in the image must fall within their acceptable ranges. So if I change just one of the two pixels to be outside the acceptable range, the match won't be successful. But the dynamic tolerance heuristic indicates that if I increase the color tolerance to 65, the match will be successful. The default value of 45 is great for many situations, but sometimes increasing the color tolerance is needed. Note how the search type is still set to tolerant, but the color tolerance is now higher. Changing the color tolerance for this particular image won't affect any other images that are set to use search type tolerant. 
Each of the search types leverage color tolerance, which you can see here. Those search types smooth, pulsing, and smooth and pulsing include additional algorithms designed to address challenges presented by anti-aliasing in animations. Now let's discuss some specific examples of using different search types. When you capture an image with low contrast, like this forward button, Eggplant will automatically select search type precise, which uses a color tolerance of 1 by default. As with search type tolerant, it's possible to adjust the exact color tolerance used if needed. The reason Eggplant selects precise automatically is that the other search types allow too much color tolerance by default, likely leading to false positive image matches. Here's an example of capturing an image that contains text. When capturing an image, Eggplant uses OCR to try to read your image. If OCR can read it, as with this example of a text element, Eggplant will automatically set search type smooth, and even suggest a name for the image based on what OCR was able to read. Smooth is an algorithm designed particularly for handling the dynamic smoothing effects, or anti-aliasing, of text. The rule of thumb when capturing an image that contains a text element is to use search type smooth. Smooth is a very forgiving search type that also leverages color tolerance. Many of the images you capture will default to using search type tolerant, which is generally appropriate, though you might find that the exact level of color tolerance used might need to be adjusted based on how consistent your UI is at rendering color. The pulsing and smooth and pulsing search types are used rarely, but are designed to handle images that contain animations. Let's dig into handling duplicated elements on the screen. There are two main ways to handle duplicated elements, through search rectangles and the every image location function. Which approach you'll use will depend on the particular situation and the assumptions you can make about your UI. You can even combine the approaches if necessary. This example should look familiar. It's the UI that changes arrangement based on whether the device is in landscape or portrait mode and includes the duplicated checkbox element. If I want to toggle the checkbox for a particular setting, I should use a search rectangle to limit the search area around the label for the setting of interest. You can set search rectangles based on different values, such as image hotspot locations, edges of text found by OCR searches, coordinates, edges of the subscreen, and more. For this example, I'm going to base the search rectangle on the locations of successful OCR searches and the right edge of the set screen. I can use the image rectangle function and the points functions, such as top right, to set up a search rectangle that leverages the actual location of the touch sounds setting label on the screen. I will use the top right of the touch sounds label to define the top left corner of the search rectangle. I will use the top of the adjacent setting label, screen lock sound, and the remote screen size function to define the lower right corner of the search rectangle. Using a conditional statement, I've created code that can toggle the specific checkbox I need in either device orientation. Consider this element in my contacts list that is not only duplicated, but can appear in two different states, selected and unselected. The default behavior for eggplant when searching for an element like this is to validate the instance of the image that is closest to the upper left corner of the screen. However, often there is a different instance you need to interact with, so it might be tempting to capture the image with some additional context in it to distinguish it as the second instance in the list. This approach would likely work, but you wouldn't be able to reuse the image to interact with the first instance, and incorporating those additional contextual elements into the image could introduce too much variation. One way to handle these duplicate images is by using the every image location function, which returns a list of locations where all instances of the image were found, with instances ordered based on how close they are to the upper left corner of the screen. If I want to interact with the second closest instance to the upper left, I can specify item 2, or the second item, of every image location to click on it. 
If you want to use this method, you must be sure all instances have appeared before calling every image location, and the instance of interest must always be in the position you expect. Another approach to handle this particular example is to set up a search rectangle that limits the search area only to where the second instance should appear. But this relies on there being a reliable image or pair of images to anchor the search rectangle to. For example, I can define the search rectangle based on images that appear above and below the second instance. Here's a situation where the default OCR breed properties didn't detect any text in my image, which will sometimes happen with single characters, so it didn't set search type smooth. Because this image has text in it, even though it's only one character, I'll override the search type to smooth. Because smooth is such a forgiving search type, sometimes using it with relatively small images with few pixels to compare can be detrimental. So you'll want to be thoughtful about overwriting the search type with these more forgiving search types. Note how I'm repositioning the hotspot to define the upper left and lower right corners of the search rectangle. Alternatively, you can use the Set Rectangle tool on the toolbar to set up your search rectangle that uses two anchor images. Instead of repositioning the hotspots of the image to the corners of the search rectangle, you can also use the image location function to perform a pixel adjustment relative to the hotspots. Remember that this element can also appear in both a selected and unselected state. So let's move on to the topic of working with image collections. Image collections are folders inside the images area of your suite, and they get special treatment by eggplant. Image collections are used to group together equivalent images so that you can easily reference the image collection in your script. They are generally used to group together images that represent different states or appearances of the element. In this same example, I'm using the Make Collection button to turn my original image into a collection and to automatically save the new captured image into that collection. You can see that every image location now finds two instances total of my image when referencing the image collection. Because Eggplant automatically searches for all images inside the collection when you reference that image collection in your script, it's important not to reference or use an image collection if you need to validate that an image is appearing in a specific state or appearance. Our online knowledge base articles on cross-mobile and cross-browser scripting discuss strategies for handling images from different environments in depth. Last but not least, let's talk about the image editor. The image editor is there to help you handle tricky images. You shouldn't need the image editor often, but it can help resolve rather challenging issues that can arise. The Internet Explorer icon is a good example of a challenging image. It's nowhere near rectangular, and it has holes in the center of the icon. To avoid capturing the background as part of the image, I could just capture a tiny piece of the icon, like the left side of the E but then the image will be so small, it'll be difficult for the testers to recognize. Instead, I can open the image in the image editor and select to ignore the background pixels of the image. Using the slider will increase the range of pixel colors that will be ignored. Now it doesn't matter what the state of the icon is or what the background color of the desktop is. This icon is a good candidate for ignoring the background because it has good contrast in color and the different colors are arranged in a unique shape. However, here's an example of an image where ignoring the background would likely cause many false positive image matches. The only thing that made the original image unique was the interface between the background and the icon. By removing the background, I'm left only with an array of similarly colored pixels that can easily be mistaken for other flat gray areas of the UI. Hopefully these tips help you create a strong foundation for your automation.